Hi, how's it going? It's Shan here and today's video is all about golf equipment. These are my golf clubs that I've had for six or seven years now and I love them. Um, and today I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about golf clubs, golf balls, and anything else that you should have in your golf bag to get started. Let's go! and for tournaments, you're allowed to have a maximum of 14 golf clubs. Although if you're playing with your friends and just having fun, it doesn't really matter. Although I will say you probably won't need more than 14 golf clubs. If you're actually just starting out to golf, I would say bring a maximum of 8 to 10 golf clubs uh, because they're just extra weight and you won't really need them. Golf clubs are typically divided into three categories. The first are woods, which are the clubs that have a bigger headpiece. The second are irons, which are the clubs that have a really thin blade-like headpiece. And the third is just one club, it's your putter, and that's the club that you will use on the greens. I am going to go into details about each of the categories and subdivide them for you. The first category is woods, and there are three types of clubs within the woods category. The first is your driver, which is also your number one wood and the club that you will hit the furthest. It also has the biggest headpiece, so you can't mistake it. It also has the lowest loft, and what I mean by that is um, the degree of the club face relative to perpendicular to the ground. So if you think you draw a line perpendicular to the ground, 90 degrees, and this club is about 10.5 degrees off of that line. Um, generally, drivers come between 9 and 13 degrees. If you're just starting out, it doesn't really matter what degree it is. Just know that it will be the lowest loft of all of your clubs and the furthest one, uh, and the furthest distance if you hit it properly. The second type of clubs in your woods category will be your fairway woods. And generally when you purchase a set of clubs, it will come with two of them, the five wood and three wood. This is my five wood and I have this really cute head cover on it. Um, I have the Adams Tight Lives. These are my favorite fairway woods that I've ever hit in my life. Um, I would strongly recommend them, although I got this one I want to say like five years ago, so I don't know if you can find the exact same one. But essentially fairway woods are designed so that they have a flatter head. They do still have the big chunky heads, um, but they have a smaller head so that you can hit them off the ground without the ball teed up. And this is great for your second shot for long par fours or for your par fives. The third type of club in the woods category are your hybrids. This is the TaylorMade M6 that I got earlier this year. It's one of the newer versions and I love it. Um, the reason it's called a hybrid is because they are a crossover between fairway woods and irons. Um, instead of having long irons, which are really hard to hit, if you've ever tried to hit a three iron, two iron, or one iron, God forbid, no one has a one iron. Um, but instead of trying to hit long irons, you can opt to replace them with a hybrid. Um, these are much easier to hit and you'll get the same distance, so you might as well. Um, these are also called rescue clubs because they are easier to get out of the rough um, when you still need to carry a certain distance for a really long pull. Now let's talk about your second category of clubs, which are your irons. I have the TaylorMade R11s from quite a few years ago. Let me show you up close. Um, they've probably made newer versions of these, but honestly, they don't really go out of style and they're working just fine for me. Um, I would recommend buying a full set of irons. Do not chop off your irons and get different brands. Just get the same brand and you're good to go. Um, typically, when you buy a set of irons, it will come with an S, which stands for sandwich, P, which stands for pitching wedge, and then going up the numbers, 9, 8, 7, 6. Um, sometimes it will come with a 5 iron, but a lot of the times the sets end at a 6 iron. I actually purchased the 5 iron because I wanted that instead of having a second hybrid. Um, but again, if you like to hit long irons instead of hitting woods, more than welcome to buy yourself a 5 iron, 4 iron, even a 3 iron. Please don't get a 2 or 1 iron because they are just like impossible to hit and why do that to yourself? And again, as I explained earlier, the reason that larger numbers will actually go a shorter distance is because the number is relative to the degree um, of the club face, which is also known as the loft, from perpendicular to the ground. So a 9-iron, for example, um, let me show you guys. 
The club head is a lot more flat than my 6 iron, if you can see the difference here. Clubs that have a larger degree will naturally launch the ball higher, um, which means you will get less distance. For example, I have I traded out my sand wedge for these two Cleveland wedges, um, and I have one that's 56 degrees and one that's 60 degrees. If you buy a set of clubs, the S club will generally be between 54 and 56 degrees, and they will have a flatter bottom part. And the reason for that is so that the club can cut through the sand or through really rough um, around the greens and make it easier for you to hit. Uh, but I like to have these two clubs. These are probably my favorite clubs. Um, this 60 degrees is great for when you want to hit flop shots. If you don't know what that is, it's where the ball basically just pops straight into the air and then drops. And it's great to if you have like a bunker in front of you or some water and you just want to launch the ball up and drop right on the green without it rolling anywhere. Um, so yeah. When you, get start, when you first get started, you do not need to purchase these, but as you get more comfortable with short game, with chipping, I would recommend investing in what's called a lob wedge, um, and these are great just for fun if you wanted to try to spin your ball or try to hit flop shots. And last but definitely not least, we have the putter. This is the club that you will use to put the ball into the hole on the greens. A green is the light patch of grass that is at the end of each hole. Putters come with different designs. This is more of the traditional design. I have the tailor-made ghost putter from almost a decade ago. Um, but nowadays, you can find putters that have a larger headpiece, and it, some people think that it helps them line up the ball better or helps them visualize the line. Um, it is totally up to preference, and I advise that you should go try out different types of putters and see which one fits the best for you. Before we move on to talk about golf balls, here are some additional tips for your first set of golf clubs. Number one is to buy a set of golf clubs. What I mean by that is buy the whole set that comes with a driver, a fairway wood at least, um, and a set of irons and a putter. That way you don't have to worry about missing a certain club category or missing a certain club because a set will generally come with everything that you need. My second advice would be to be very careful if you are buying secondhand or off of someone online. Um, the reason for that is technology has definitely advanced within the golf club industry um, and if you're purchasing older clubs, sometimes they will be have cracks in them from a lot of use and the second is they might be harder to hit and that would be bad if you're trying to learn to golf and you're using clubs that are already very difficult to hit well. The third advice would be to not carry all of the clubs to the golf course on your first time because you won't need it. For example, you will need a driver, you will need at least one fairway wood, maybe you don't need to carry both the five wood and the three wood because it won't really make a difference. Um, you should learn to hit one of them, I would suggest the five wood because it's slightly easier, um, but you don't have to carry both and you don't have to carry all of the irons. You can if you want to, uh, but I would say definitely carry a longer iron, maybe a seven iron and a shorter iron, maybe a nine iron. You don't have to carry all of them. Um, and finally, definitely carry one pitching wedge one sand wedge and your putter. Because short game is something that anyone can work on even before you've mastered your swing and it's probably the most important part of golf. So I would definitely recommend bringing those clubs in your set. Um, and yeah, that is all for golf clubs. If you have additional questions in that before we start the second round, leave them in the comments below and let's get started with golf balls. Golf balls, you will definitely need them if you're gonna golf. If you're just starting out to golf, you will probably also lose a bunch of them. And that being said, here are three ways that you can get golf balls. One is to buy them new, which I would not recommend if you're just starting out. Two is to buy them used. And third is to find them on the golf course. I will say number three with a big disclaimer, which is do not pick up someone's golf ball if they are still playing it. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people will pick up golf ball in the middle of the golf course as if they think that no one's using it. But if you find a golf ball, out of bounds or in the woods, fair game, keep it, it's yours. And if you find a good golf ball, then it always feels great, trust me. <laughs> the reason that I would not recommend you buying really nice new golf balls, like Titleist, for example, is because one, they cost a lot of money. They cost like upwards of five to six dollars for one ball. If you're gonna be losing like seven on your first round, that, that can add up really fast. And the second is if you're just starting out, you probably won't be able to tell the difference between the really expensive golf balls and the slightly cheaper options. Um, for professionals, there is actually a difference and you can feel it with the golf ball, especially on shorter shots. Um, 
Golf ball manufacturers like to say that, oh, this golf ball is better because they redesigned the shell of it, or it has three layers instead of two. And that does make a difference for pros because they can spin the golf ball, which is what you see on TV when the ball lands and it rolls backwards a little bit, um, or they can get more distance from the golf ball. So if you're just starting out, again, it doesn't really matter. Just buy a, an affordable option or find just golf balls on the golf course. Um, these Titleist Chrome Socks are actually one of my favorite, like more affordable options of brand name golf balls. They do feel softer and it's much harder to spin them, but I actually personally like it. And I don't really mind if I don't get an extra five or 10 yards from my golf ball. For me, it's just important to hit it straight and to shoot well. Golf tees. I got this giant bag of golf tees from Amazon. You can also purchase them at the golf course or at your golf town or whatever store you want. Um, they come in different lengths and the reason for that is some people like to tee the ball higher, some people like to tee the ball lower, um, and some people like to buy specialized like short tees for their woods and stuff. For me, generally, if I need to tee it up, I'll just find someone's broken tee on the tee deck and use that. Um, and then I have these like full length ones for my driver. You can only tee up the ball on your first shot off the tee deck. You can't tee it up anywhere else. Please don't tee it up anywhere else. Um, but that being said, it is dependent on what your preference is and how big your club head is. There are also plastic options, which are basically indestructible. I've seen some of these. You can hit hundreds of shots and the tee will not break. Um, but personally, I prefer to have wooden or bamboo tees. Uh, that's, that's just a preference. There's really no other reason for it other than I like these more than plastic ones. And now let's talk about other things that you will need for your first round of golf. The first is a ball marker. On the green, you can pick up your golf ball, clean it, and put it back. That is the only place on the golf course where you can pick up your golf ball. But in order to pick up your golf ball, you have to mark where it was, hence a ball marker. There are three options. You can get brand name golf ball markers, like they have like Titleist or Nike or um, all of the golf brands sell their own. Or you can get really cool ones that you can order online or get as gifts. Um, a popular one is like the four leaf clover one or some women will have like really cute pink sparkly ones. It's all up to you. Um, and the third option that I tend to use because I always forget to bring a ball marker is I just use a coin. If you live in Canada, you know that we have way too many coins because instead of having dollar bills, we have a loony and a toonie, a $1 and $2 coin. My American friends always laugh at this, but those are great options. And my favorite is probably to use a quarter, uh, but I would definitely recommend using a coin. It is a lot cheaper to use real money than to buy a ball marker if you forgot one. The last thing that you might consider getting is a ball repair tool. This is a really small one that I got at PGA National a while ago when I played a tournament there. But essentially what they look like is they have these two prongs and they are designed so that it is easier for you to fix divots on the green. And what I mean by that is sometimes when your ball lands on the green and it just rained or you know like the green is really soft, it'll leave a little hole. And it is proper etiquette to fix your own divots. But that being said, also if you are putting and someone else's divot is in your line, you can also fix it, flatten out the green so that your ball won't be impacted by, you know, hopping over the divot that has happened to me before. It is not imperative that you have one because you can fix divots on the green with a T if you know how to do that. Um, but these do make it a lot easier to fix a divot and have it look better. So it is an option and it really doesn't weigh anything if you want to carry it around. So I would recommend getting one or, you know, getting gifted one or ask someone for one. Um, but yeah. And that is it for today's video all about golf equipment. If you have any additional questions, drop them in the comments below and I will definitely read them and get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It will really help with my channel. Subscribe because I will be making more videos in this series. The next one is all about clothing. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to smile, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.